this changes things. Three. Go! Two. Wait. One. Without further ado, okay, and a, a thank you and good morning to, to Sandipan and also to the Z, Sudeep the Goes, B-U-2-U-T, who visited our club, I guess maybe about a little bit more than two years ago, uh, and has been a regular member of our Coffee Talks uh, and was instrumental in helping uh, get Sandipan in terms of being a speaker with us tonight. But Sandipan, the show is yours. Let me turn it over to you, WXTR to R to VU3 JXD. Sandipan, over to you. So greetings from the city of joy or the Kolkata from where I belong. So at first I would like to thank the management of the Fairlawn Amateur Radio Club for providing us this opportunity to speak about the radio scene here in India. So today I'm accompanied by Sudipta Ghosh, whose call sign is also Victor Uniform Number 2, Uniform Tango who helped with the research and writing all about today's presentation. So, how I uh, tend to take forward this presentation today, broadly into three segments. So, broadcast DXing, how is the scenario like in India, evolution from DXing to amateur radio, and how is the current amateur radio scene here in India. All the research work that uh, we'll be discussing uh, here, it's been done through discussion with various veteran DXRs, resources available with them, and some resources sourced from the internet. So before we start, we'd like to take you through some of our activities here at Indian DX Club International. As you have briefly mentioned, what are our activities here? So IDXA is an informal association of DXRs mainly from India established in the mid 70s of which Sudipta Ghosh is also one of the founding members and the club takes publishes the Asian DX review the DX bulletin which is currently an online publication and distributed free and we organize the DX expeditions and various webinars in promoting the hobby of radio listening in general so this is the glimpse of the Asian DX review, which can also be downloaded from our club website, that is www.idxci.in. So this is one of the programs which was aired in the Adventist World Radio in November 2020. So we issued QSL cards against it and it was kind of, we got 115 odd QSL reports. Reports. So, how the DXing hobby in India or the broadcast DXing came into being? So, the people like Sudip Ghosh and the fellow DXers they popularized this with some article which came in a magazine. So, which I also happened to read in my early childhood days, and from there I was also one of the self-taught DXers. So, quite an interesting hobby uh, here in the eastern part not much of the internet influence of internet or the television in early until the mid 2010 so hobby of radio listening is quite popular until then before the broadcaster started disappearing from the bands so one of our fellow members would be Pradeep Kundu, who is also one of the record holders in India for having verification of more than 350 stations, broadcast stations in one year. So then again, we have Babul Gupta, who is a radio buff from 1970s, who was, who was able to listen to the LRA 36 station from Antarctica. And that was quite a sensation in the local media that it was carried all across. So the club first organized the expedition in 16 1980 during the total solar eclipse. This was on the request of Professor D.D. Meisel from NY State University, followed by several expeditions over the years, mainly in the coast of Bay of Bengal and 
the next the expedition which we plan to organize the broadcast the expedition is in the andaman island here are the few glimpses from the historical history of the expeditions so in the recent past and this is the last deep expedition we had in 2019 this was also covered in the local media as well so this is where the andaman island is and where we plan to go in the next deep expedition sometime next year probably the conditions are favorable for traveling and the things have started getting normalized here in india we're looking forward to a great deep expedition over there so it's a brief about the job next uh, so our activities was noticed by the world radio tv handbook editorial team and they also mentioned us in their editorial note and we are also honored by the european dx council as one of their observer members so that's pretty much about how the uh, functions and what we look into so in today's session we will briefly cover into three parts as i mentioned so the broadcast dxing then evolution from a dxing to amateur radio scene and amateur radio in india how it is currently going so the hobby of broadcast dxing in india has been since last 50 years or so as far as it can be recollected the golden period of the activity was during the 70s 80s and till late 90s there used to be very active dxers who used to enjoy listening using simple analog receivers so with rapid progress in technology listeners are in decline due to advent of internet smartphones but still we in india have dedicated listeners who exchange letters with radio station and send reports to station regularly i can say geographically most of the dxrs are located in the south east and the northern regions of india as far as dx information and learning tips during those days we used to listen to dx programs like media network or dx party line or swiss shortwave merry go round etc the owning to world radio tv handbook was something was so owning world radio tv handbook was something like a treasure at that point of time and was limited to very few and those official monitors appointed by the radio station so to exchange dx information we have yahoo groups the facebook groups or the whatsapp groups currently i can say facebook and whatsapp group is quite active with exchange of information on real time basis so we have on air a dx information net conducted at 40 meter or 7 megahertz sam band every sunday at 300 utc where the logging information is read about on air by amateur radio operators so this is on air from uh, the city of hyderabad mm, the gentleman is now in the india book of records for carrying out this longest net the net was carried in the year 1980 and still going on so earlier transmission was carried on in am mode and so the listeners can uh, with simple radio without side bands can listen presently the transmission is on lsb mode occasionally we have well known dxers like victor gunatilike or jos jacob who are checking and sharing the dx tips dxers located in the south and eastern part of our country has logged medium wave station as far as thailand australia japan myanmar cambodia laos philippines and in the winter months uh, log station uh, from say romania greece ukraine a long wave stations from mongolia morocco germany bbc or the monte carlo poland even from turkmenistan was logged by the dxrs so either just to log long wave or tor dt mini wave antenna so in north medium wave band is crowded with stations from Middle East and China, Pakistan, Nepal. So we have also a small group of FM DXers during sporadic propo propagation. FM stations from Middle East, Afghanistan, Pakistan. This came up in our radio sets using a normal Yagi or a quad antenna. As far as shortwave is concerned, China Radio International dominates the band. 
followed by stations say from middle east personally i hear, uh, hear radio from romania international stations from tashkent with high power relay stations from bbc or bo facilities is audible with good signals so now bbc has started winding up their facilities even from thailand wooden thani was the base in the past there has been some expeditions which organized by listeners at various times based in east india the locations were some less inhabited beaches along the east coast of bay of bengal i have taken part in some of the expedition and the last expedition which we mentioned about a fortunate to host that so we put in multiple beverage antenna for about 4 3 to 400 meters in length and were erected pointing to the different directions so in delhi we have monthly dxrs made during winter months also in madras calcutta small group of dxrs made few times in a year to foster the hobby presentations are made during ham fest in college during the science activity also we have some dxrs doing write up in the local newspaper tv and radio presentation are also done so one of our friends based in chennai publishes a newsletter regular basis in local language exchanging schedules and logging information now moving on to the receiver availability so during 1980s and 90s only a handful of listeners could afford to own a receiver with a digital frequency readout however with analog frequency readout is available off the shelf mainly philips or some local models but one can procure radio with digital frequency readout only through online portals like ebay amazon or alibaba also one of one may have to pay import fees alibaba is quite popular in this geography and we were able to get brand like, like texan or recently the xh data which is quite popular here at a very reasonable cost many of our radio friends get this imported from alibaba portal so two band with am and fm coverage chinese made receivers are available in large cities from shops and roadside vendors listeners are uh, listeners also use home made long wire or dipole antennas cut to a central frequency the low cost pawrdt mini wave antenna Uh, this is mainly supplied by the russian ham vendors through ebay is also quite popular we do not have strict rfi emission control norms followed by electric or electronic product manufacturers so and several cost low cost product made by chinese has flooded the market so as the government is replacing the street lighting lamps with say energy efficient led lamps and providing electricity to customers with subsidized led lamps so due to this noise floor is quite high in for listeners in the city so several of my friend is also using russian made mini whip antenna as they find good reception here with moderate noise level so as we turn to the next so how did this radio hobby evolved into a amateur radio scene this dxr turned into a amateur radio operator here in india so dxing was again different with no internet uh, in the early days we had to eagerly wait for so dx program magazines or the newsletters from various clubs so so one can buy internet receivers from the high end receivers only from the internet the bands were very much full with the international shortwave broadcasters then like BBC, Voice of America, Radio Moscow, Deutsche Welle were the powerhouses besides other national and the missionary broadcast. There were few clandestine stations too, like Mujahideen Akhalik station from South Sudan. Man-made radio noise was much less because indecent lamps, as I mentioned, was the mainstay and the CFL had not yet arrived. There were no mobile phone, no mobile phone towers during... sun spots the medium was full of japanese uh, regional station of the lucky days tropical bands were full of indonesian stations in the evening african appeared late evening here in india and the night that in america and the indian morning so exotic stations were logged 
as far as Cook Island, which is a analog radio of Bush. But the antenna was just a piece of copperware. So the reception reports were sent by mail, often to IRCs. So with the advent of internet, as the internet grew, it took a toll on the radio broadcasting, especially in the shortwave. As you could get instant news online, the listen to distant stations through live streaming, shortwave radio stations began to close down, as we all know. Deutsche Welle is an example. It ran its uh, Trincomalee relay station here in Sri Lanka uh, through the thick of Tamil Ilam movement and beamed in excellent signals to the Africa, Far East, South Asia, but it closed down its services in 2015 and handed back to the SLBC or the Sri Lankan Broadcasting Corporation, who now rent out airtime from there. The power guzzling shortwave transmitters were poor second to FM and internet began to and began to close down. Today the national broadcasters have shortwave broadcasting mainly focused on the African continent. The world was taken up somewhat by the missionaries and it's uncommon to find TWR and AWR broadcasting from their relay stations of national broadcasters around the world. Medium wave, however, still remain the relevant to cover the thinly spread communities. So while all, all these were happening, the Indian government made a significant change in the Indian wireless and telegraph amateur service rules in the year 2009. So the avid DXers who were lookout for the unknown signals started migrating to amateur radio as a hobby. So talking about what is this change is all about by the government of India? So, getting license for amateur radio operators was a bit tough. So, stringent examination followed by various background by the security agencies, which could often take kind of more than a year or so to get a license. And there were multiple of categories of license. Now, that has been brought down to only two grades so which is restricted grid and the general grid the restricted grid uh, is identified by victor uniform 3 and the general grid users are like victor uniform 2 so also with the ease in the regulation and the users or the radio hobbies started appearing for these exams so there were the various clubs. The oldest of the clubs are like Amateur Radio Society of India and the National Institute of Amateur Radio. These are the kind of oldest amateur radio clubs here in India who helps establish the amateur radio clubs across the geography and help organize exams and eventually they give the trainings also. So that have helped to a large extent in helping the spread of hobby here in India. So, if I tell how is amateur radio thing, how big is the amateur radio scene here in India? So, currently we have around 25,000 ham radio operators in India. First amateur radio operator in India was Amrendra Chandra Goptu. The call sign was 2 Juliet Kilo. He was licensed in like 1921 and eventually he was a resident of Calcutta. Uh, later that year, Mukul Bose to HQ. His new call sign letter was Victory Uniform to HP. Uh, became the second ham operator by introducing the first two ham way ham radio communication in the country. Both were from the city of Calcutta or as Kolkata used to be known at that time. By the way, Calcutta is also the city and place of experiment of Sir J.C. Bose, who described to the Royal Institute of London his research about the millimeter wavelengths, used waveguides, horn antennas, various lenses, semiconductors at frequencies as high as 60 gigahertz. And much of his original equipment still exists now at the Bose Institute in Kolkata. By 1923, there were 20 British hams operating in India. In 1929, the call sign prefix VU came into effect in India, replacing the three-letter call sign 
let me also mention about other ace ham of the country who was born in 1921 in this city he was miki mazumdar or view to cq whose photograph you can see on the right of the screen he was licensed in 1932 and by the next year he got his wac work all continent diploma his activity was regularly reported in the qst first in feb 1937 this was followed in 1938 as well as in 1939 in april 1958 he came on air with his homebrew ssb rig he had a very small equipped ham shack with rich collection of old equipments indian ham always enjoyed very close and fruitful relationship with us hams the amateur radio society of india was established in 1954 55 loosely in new delhi the it is a member society of iaru or that is the international amateur radio union from very beginning the arrl in 1969 permitted arsi to reprint three of the arrl publication for sale and circulation in india this was of great help to the indian ham at that time many of the elmer learned the nitty gritty from this publications the activity of amateur radio controlled in terms of indian telegraph act 1985 after independence the indian wireless telegraphy amateur radio amateur service rules 1950 was promulgated on 24th september 1958 the hobby became modernized with promulgation of indian wireless telegraph amateur service rules in 1978 the photograph which you can see these rules are further amended in 2019 which gave way to the new wave of amateur radio operators here in india activity here in india is managed by the wireless and planning and coordination wing of the division uh, in the ministry of communication and information technology so it's a regulatory body of the amateur radio in india wpc assigns the call signs issues amateur radio license conduct exams allocate frequency spectrum monitor the radio waves so popular amateur radio events like daily ham nets the amateur uh ham fest and regular dx contest so hill topping activity fox hunts are very popular so who can become a ham in india any indian citizen who is above 12 years of age can become ham by appearing in the amateur station operators examination and obtaining a valid license amateur radio operators can operate using the modes from 10 meters to 160 meters in the hf and say 6 meter 2 meters 20 centimeters in vhf uhf and shdf bands the power allocated is like 400 watts in hf and 25 watts in the higher band so moving on to the next phase about the clubs here in india various clubs here in india and they are particularly dedicated in a specific cause in promoting this hobby so if i talk about the national institute of amateur radio so or the arsi pardon the logo got wrong for arsi here so they are the primary torch bearer in the amateur radio scene in india so any new club or the amateur radio club which comes up are primarily hand guided or the hand holded by this two institutions in setting up the club station or popularizing this amateur radio hobby in the locality so given by the population of india we are still in the very nascent stage just 25000 ham radio operators and if i talk about the active ham radio operators at any given point of time it would be like 50% to 60% of the population would be active then there are a segment of amateur radio operators or the amateur radio clubs like uh, lamakan amateur radio club at hyderabad they are more into the advanced stage of home brewing they have asar farhan victory uniform to ec whose uh, model BITX is quite popular and that has been 
quite a phenomena or that has given a opportunity in the cost sensitive market to get the users going into the on air on especially on the hf bands so they are also working to get some cube sets on air lark also have a regular ham fest or the lamakan fest as we call it every year in the early january or towards the end of december then there are clubs like oscar so which is open source class for amateur radio they are providing online coaching or the uh, training to the aspiring ham radio operators through online mode again through zoom or the google meet or teams whatever the popular applications there are so another important aspect of amateur radio or the evolution here in india is into the helping the various agencies in the disaster management so while natural calamities like various cyclones come into play uh, good devastation is all across the mobile networks go for a toss out here then the amateur radio operators are being called upon uh, to help the government agencies or the various agencies to set up the intermediary communication apart from this their own setup so how this setup works here in india the every government agencies like if you call police or the disaster management department or the army they have their own set of frequencies allocated by the virtue of the license here in india the amateur radio operators during disaster can communicate across these bands so which probably helps establishing a fair communication between these agencies and they have proved to be quite pivotal in this disaster scenario so and last to last year in 2020 in here at kolkata we had a cyclone called ayla and that was like one of the fiercest cyclone that i have seen in my life so far that caused widespread damage and we were like without mobile networks for couple of days 3 4 days bare minimum and it was like 5 to 7 days before we could at least get the internet connectivity back then this amateur radio clubs jumped in to provide the reliefs for the submerged people then people in distress or providing the communication to the management for rescue search and rescue so i was also part of that activity the amateur radio operators are also being called upon during the time of election so election is quite a big big event during the last elections the national elections where we elect our prime minister so at that point of time i had one opportunity the i was called upon by the election commission here to go and provide voluntary service for establishing communication in one of the remotest place where the mobile network communication was not that fair and it was quite an experience for us to provide communication in the farthest place so it was like india bangladesh border and somewhere near the bay of bengal so one of the remotest place probably i have been to quite an experience over there and truly i have learned how amateur radio here in india or the amateur radio operators who are coming in large quantities i mean schools we are going and promoting this hobby so one can get a license as early as 12 years and the restrictions on the verifications are now quite lenient so you could get license quite easily and on an average if i look into the statistics which is available from the government website we could find in last two year alone there were like 6000 new licenses about 6000 approx were issued by the government of india despite being the lockdown and everything so and the license here comes in two formats is one is lifetime so which is like up to 80 years of age and another is of 20 years so people do not have to renew their license every 4 5 years as used to be previously so that is also giving an opportunity for radio operators to be on air without this hassle of 
getting license renewed or reappearing for the exams or the verification procedures and like so that is all about from my side and about how the radio broadcasting scenarios in here in india how are we doing that's amateur radio clubs the contribution of amateur radio in the society or the people at large now any questions anyone have i'll try my best to answers on this open it up to questions